So the next speaker to the podium, please, Dr. Aurora. Dr. Aurora will be presenting the meta-analysis of leak after laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy, and uh, the data comes from the University Hospitals Case Medical Center in Ohio, I guess. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Pomp and Felix and guests for allowing me the pleasure and the opportunity to present this data on sleeve gastrectomy and the risk of leak in meta-analysis of 4,888 patients. Sleeve gastrectomy, as everyone has just heard, has become increasingly popular as a bariatric procedure. It's, it is appreciated for its simplicity and early outcomes suggest similar uh, results in weight loss and resolution of comorbidities to those more complex procedures. Of course, however, there is a significant concern for leak, which can be a devastating event in these high-risk patients. We performed a systematic review of the literature to investigate the risk of sleeve gastrectomy and where, when, why, and how these may occur. From our systematic review of the literature, we did a PubMed-based um, survey using the keywords sleeve gastrectomy, gastric sleeve, and leak, which gave us five, 459 publications, which were then limited to 249 um, by additioning the limits of English publications, adult humans, in the last 10 years only. These were further brought down to 29 publications, which specifically discussed leak in sleeve gastrectomy and we excluded revisions, reviews, single incision articles, and those that did not focus on sleeve and leak. From these results, we got this impossible to read table of 4,888 patients. So the information was boiled down and the results are seen in the following slides. There were 29 series which ranged from 53 to 540 patients. Studies which had included less than 50 patients were excluded. There were 115 leaks out of the 4,888 patients, giving a mean leak rate overall of 2.4%. Leak rates range from zero to 7%. There were six series, including 771 patients that addressed the super obese, and the leak rate in these patients with BMI greater than 50 was 2.9%, whereas the leak rate in the patients from the series that had BMIs of less than 50 was 2.2%. There were seven series that boasted no leak. These series had comparable BMI of 46 to those series that recorded a leak. Of note, um, stapler size used was um, generally two stapler leg lengths, being the blue and green loads typically, and this was similar in the cases that had leaks. Buttressing material was not often used. As you can see in these six series without leak, there was only one that used seam guard. And there is a trend towards using larger bougie size, and I'll get to that later. So where do leaks occur? As I mentioned, seven series had no leaks. So that left us with 76% of series that documented a leak. These leaks occurred Overwhelmingly, 89% at the esophagogastric junction. However, you have to keep in mind that only 52% of those that documented a leak documented its location. Similarly, when do leaks occur? Well, only 48% of those that published leaks documented the time at which the, the leak was diagnosed. And of those, Approximately 50% were early leaks before 10 days, and 50% were late leaks after 10 days. The data on this is split. When we're looking at sleeve gastrectomy and concern for leak, we have to ask the question, what could be influencing this? And staplers, buttressing, and bougies would be the main topics of interest. So the majority of the studies used two staple leg lengths, meaning the green stapler and the blue stapler, which, depending on the company, had a different length, but in the same range. Few, few studies used buttressing material. Five of these series, which produced 20 leaks in 675 patients, had a leak rate of about 3%. This was similar to those series that used oversewing of the staple line consistently. And 
those studies that did not use any type of buttressing or suture had a leak rate which was slightly less at 2.3%. Bougie size seemed to be of importance. Not all studies used a bougie, they used different devices, such as an endoscope, but size was documented in 28 of the 29 series. And bougie size then ranged from 32 to 52 French. A trend was seen towards less leak with larger bougie size. And statistically looking at bougies or size greater than 40, the leak rate was 0.6%, as opposed to those studies that used a sizing device that was less than 40 French, which had a leak rate of 2.8%. This suggests then that bougie size of greater than 40 was associated with a lower leak rate. Stricture rate and bleed rate were both below 1%, and these incidences were not associated with any type of um, other associated factors. In summary then, mean leak rate after sleeve gastrectomy is 2.4%. Leak occurs primarily at the esophageal gastric junction in 89% of the time. Time to diagnosis of leak was variable. Patients with a BMI greater than 50 ha may have an increased risk for leak. Bougie size less than 40 may also increase the risk for leak. And staple line buttressing or oversewing does not influence leak. The risk of bleed and stricture are less than 1%. In conclusion, to prevent leak in sleeve gastrectomy, you should stay away from the esophageal gastric junction and using a larger sizing device may assist in this. Using two stapler leg lengths is advocated, and be aware of patients with a BMI greater than 50 as they have a higher risk of leak. Thank you very much for your attention. It's a provocative paper. I'm sure there's going to be some questions. You have one? No, I'm going to hold off. All right, so I think one of the pertinent points is people always talk about the sleeve gastrectomy and what an interesting operation it is. It is the only irreversible weight loss surgery we do, and the leak rate is about three times higher than the gastric bypass. And when you have a leak with a sleeve gastrectomy, it's extremely difficult to manage, particularly at the gastroesophageal junction. Comments? Yes, I would agree, and that's exactly why we brought up this, this publication, um, is to investigate how we can avoid leaks, and specifically looking at that GE junction, or EG junction, um, there is um, a particular study that discusses how they changed their strategy from the early days when they started uh, the procedure to later on in their experience, how they specifically stay one to two centimeters away up at that top area of the end of the resection of the, the uh, remnant stomach. And in your in your Is it going, in your conclusions or in your summary statement, you said that uh, bougie size may be related to um, leak rate. Did you modify after looking at this, your technique? Did you change your bougie size or were you always in the 40 we, range? We have not, we have not um, made any adaptations yet from this data. Um, the, we actually do not use a bougie at our facility. We use um, what's called an easy tube, which gives you, uh, I think, a 36 French. All right. Any other comments? Yeah, just, you talked about time to leak. You talked about late leaks. When you say late, how late? And did you, did, were any of those included, did these super late leaks? So from, from, the, from the literature that, that, that we examined, um, when I discussed early and late leak, we chose randomly approximately 10 days because I figured it was when the vast majority of the people would be out of the hospital, so out of the hospital leak as opposed to in hospital leak. The early leaks did seem to occur mostly in the two to four day range, and the late leaks were variable. The majority of them were in the, sort of the second two weeks, of the, so from two to four weeks, so, so up to 28 days. So you didn't have any report of these late, late leaks in your these six months, one year leaks? No, no, that, that uh, was not included then. I'll allow one question from the floor. Go ahead. Dharma Nimeri Abu Dhabi, uh, thank you for a very nice uh, study. Uh, you showed that there were more people who were over sewing. Did you look at the studies to see if they were doing a baseball stitch or uh, a Lambert? Because uh, Randy Baker's study showed that doing a, a, a baseball stitch actually weakens the, uh, the staple line, so it is a difference. Sure, so um, no, that type of information was not detailed in enough studies for me to be able to grasp 
exactly what type of stitch they used. Some of them documented what type of suture, but very few documented any type of specific stitch. Sorry. Thank you very much.